to Experience Hawaii Life Histories, a podcast series in partnership with Hawaii Public Radio and Hawaii Council for the Humanities, featuring excerpts from the archive of over 800 interviews of Hawaii women and men at the University of Hawaii Manoa Center for Oral History in the Department of Ethnic Studies. Stores played an important part in Hawaii's plantation communities. They provided plantation residents with basic needs, served as social gathering places, catered to various ethnic preferences in food, clothing, and medicine. Plantation workers were sometimes paid once a month and were often carless, so the extended credit and free delivery that the storekeepers provided were significant services. After 1945, when the ILWU organized sugar plantation workers, they were paid more often and were able to afford cars, thus leading to the decline of plantation stores and the increase of cash and carry stores. The following four interview excerpts give a sense of the different experiences of shop owners who owned stores in the 1930s and 40s. The interviews were recorded in 1979. The fifth interview excerpt is not from Maui. Sidney Kosasa ran a grocery store started by his parents in Palolo. He went on to later open the first ABC store in Waikiki. His interview was recorded in 2001. But we begin with Mei Itamura. She was born in Nahiku, Maui to Japanese parents, moving to Kaheka with her family in 1919. She quit school four years later, after her father died, and worked pumping gasoline, being a store clerk, and then a bookkeeper at Maui Dry Goods. She was eventually put in charge of the Maui Dry Goods Liquor Department, and opened her own store in 1937, the Paia Liquor Store. She says she was the first woman in Hawaii to be issued a liquor license. So, in 1937, you you decided to start your own Yes. Yeah. No. Why did you start? Why did you make that decision? Well, uh, I, I read once in the magazine that the uh, best way to uh, make something of your life is to be self-employed. You you be the highest paid, uh, you know, woman in, in in the whole world. More you sell, you make more money. See. And you while you work in the store. You know, it's the same salary. You can't uh, advance more than what it is. How did you get the uh, building to start the store? Oh, that uh, I rented one small place right uh, in Lopaya. Then after a while, I opened another one on this side. Two. Yeah, two. Yeah. Did you feel sure that you were gonna make good and? make good money in your own business? When I started? Mm-hmm. No, I wouldn't know because uh, I heard this uh, my very good uh, uh, main uh, stockholder. He didn't want me to get the license because I'm a young girl and then nobody in Hawaii gets that license. And he said, I shouldn't get the license see, because I'm too young to run a store. You were about 32 years old, yeah? Did you feel at that time that you were qualified? Sure, I know what I'm doing. After I got the license, I didn't worry because I know I can run the store. This is easy thing. Were there other liquor stores in Lower Paia at that time when you started? When I started, uh, I don't think there, were, there was any, except the Mount Jai was one. Mm-hmm. And then when the war came, there was Japanese father that uh, had a small liquor store, but he got closed down because uh, he was alien, you see. All the time during the war, the soldiers were allowed to buy liquor. Yeah, but they didn't stay long though after that. So you said that they would clean you out of your stock? Yeah, oh. in one day's time. One day, like yeah. how much gross would you make during the war? I saw, uh, I think the highest was 36000 In one day? Yeah. Because cases by cases, you know. So you said that you think you accomplished your goal in life. Yeah. So what was that goal? Take care, good care of my own family, make them happy, and then help them, put them through school as much as I can. At the same time, make some money, 
take care of myself. Because in this life, you have to be independent, you know. You, you don't want people to uh, pass over you and, you know, oh, this uh, old lady, we don't want to stay with her, but you have to take care of her and all that, yeah. I think if you take care of yourself and uh, know what you do in your life, you know, set one goal, then you, you'll get it. Masakazu Shimoto was born on the plantation, Camp 6 in Pu'unene in 1911. His father founded Maui Shokai, one of the big five Japanese stores in Kahului. The clientele was mostly Filipino, compound workers who were only paid after their crops were harvested. Masakazu eventually took over operations of the store with his brothers, with a business history he knew well. My father was the first to trust Filipino. See, we had Nihonjin Shokai, Onishi Shokai, then we had Ikeda, and then uh, Paya Mercantile, Paya Nihonjin Shokai, they used to call it. That's five there, see, and with us, made six. A lot of competition. Five of you were all in, in Kahului. Mm -hmm. And you all sold the same type of merchandise? Yeah, only we sold bicycles that were nobody sold. Then we sold RCA uh, phonograph, which nobody sold. I think that's the only difference. Though. Then we went into the Filipino business. We gave up Japanese. Only a few handful of Japanese customers. What did your father do to, you know, get the trust of the Filipinos? We had a good Filipino salesman. He's the one. Not, they don't, not my father, the, the salesman. In the, those days, plantation had what you call a compound money. That's, you know, they take care of the field. Every two years. Yeah, they take care of the field by themselves. And then after harvest, if you have good tonnage, you make good money. Those people we have to carry. I know some of them we carry for about nine, nine, eight hundred dollars those days, you know. So in, a, in two years' time, while they were waiting for their king the, to be Yeah, hired. then we collected our money. Uh -huh. So sometimes their bill would be eight hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. I remember for eight hundred dollars. They trusted that store so much. They put their life savings inside. Every day they put savings. So we had, just like the bank, passbook, keep the account in. That's why we could carry, you know, those uh, people that every two years pay us. If not, we cannot carry. We have that extra cash to carry them along. You try to get a couple, uh, maybe 50 people like that waiting for compound money, yeah? You can't pay the wholesaler in the end, you know. But did the other stores like Ikeda and Kobayashi, did they do that kind of thing too? Save money? Yeah. You mean people save? No, the Filipino then. Japanese didn't, didn't have those savings account already. They, they would go to the bank, yeah? The, the newcomers, Filipinos. They would say, Maui Shokai is safer than the bank. <laughs> yeah, my father said, we had quite a sum of that Filipino money, you know, save. But he, he said, not one they failed to pay back. He boasted, he said, we paid everybody, every cent. Did you have uh, many compound people not pay you? No, most of them pay compound people, they're, they're about the most trustworthy, yeah? because after all, you're carrying them for almost two years. Yeah? Of course, if they're short of income, then you have to carry them for another two years. But if it wasn't for Filipino, I think uh, maybe Mao Shokai gone already. Too much competition. George Guerrero was an immigrant to Hawaii. He was born in Ilocos Norte in the Philippines in 1909, leaving for Hawaii when he was 17. He was a live-in clerk at the Nagatani store, then worked at the Camp 5 store before opening his own shop in Wailuku in 1946. He ran the Guerrero store for 24 years, retiring and closing up shop in 1970. When did you uh, first think about working in a store? Uh, I was encouraged by my friend was working in the store that changed my mind that I had to go that I go and work in the store and then he was explaining to me that you stay in the shade the only thing you do is carry hundred pound rice hundred pound of feed you know mm -hmm. uh, so he told me I don't mind because uh, I can I can do that as it's in the shade and he told me rain or shine you can work because you stay inside the store that's why that encouraged me to go work 
what was the name of the store that she worked in? Uh, that was Nagatani store in uh, Waikapo, Wailuku. Wailuku. Uh, did you continue to live in the Punini camp while you worked in the store? Uh, no, I, they had a house for me. They, they uh, gave me the house where I, I was staying. But I did not pay anything on my uh, board. See, because I work, uh, I just stay in that house and then go eat in in a in my in the store they they give me free free food what made you decide to you know start your own business what well, well uh, at that time i was working in the plantation store i know the prices of the wholesale and i know the percentage of retail so i was thinking if i go make my store and i can sell so much i know i can make it because I had been working hard in the plantation store. If I work hard the same way as I do, I'm, I, I, I will do, I should say, then I know I can make it. That's why I, it makes my mind that I, I try my luck to make my own business. At that time, had, had a lot of plantation stores and then had a lot of Japanese-run stores. Yeah. What made you, did you think that you could get your percentage of customers? Uh, well, at the time, I know because uh, I told them that I could get plenty of them because I told them the price that we sell in the store will be the same price I will sell you. You can compare and if you don't want, well, it's up to you, but uh, I greatly appreciate if you will patronize on me. So they tell, if the same price, no problem, we buy from you. So at that time, I have all different nationality. I have Filipinos, I have Japanese, I have Chinese, Hawaiian, all kind of ethnic. All the way up until 1970, you were doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever want your your sons or daughters to continue the store? Uh, well, uh, I tried to convince them that one of them should carry over. But they they, prepare, they said the hours that uh, they're putting in there, they said it's too long. So they want to work only eight hours and go home and that's all. <laughs> George Guerrero was clearly not a man of eight-hour workdays. Neither was Alice Saito Guvea. She was born in 1918 on Maui in Keahua, where her father was an independent pineapple grower. She moved to Haiku when she was 13 to live with her uncle, who was a storekeeper. In 1948, she opened the Economy Store in Lower Paia, running the shop for nearly 30 years. You said that when you first opened, you attracted a lot of Filipinos. Filipinos, yeah. And a lot of Portuguese after you got married. Yeah, Portuguese, uh-huh. Yeah? yeah. Was it mainly because of what you sold that attracted Filipinos and Portuguese? In the beginning, well, uh, Filipinos as a whole, if you treat them right, they are very faithful. The Hawaiians also, yeah. Our Japanese are more, they stick to one. But uh, later on, well, they, they all came my way, yeah. And I, I had all nationalities in, in the store. When you first started in 48, what was, for example, one day your gross volume of sales? Say that, yeah, about $50 there. Oh, Fifty dollars. Uh -huh. Later, on. later on, seven years later, when you added that uh, open vegetable bin, yeah, and you were selling pork and fish and so forth, about how much? Uh went up to maybe about five hundred dollars. B, yeah, mm -hmm. five hundred, yeah, mm -hmm. something there. Yeah, and then and when then. you closed the store in nineteen seventy-five, about that time, about how much? Well, some days was thousand something. When did you yeah. start to notice a decline in your sales? When the big markets came up. And the uh, distance, oh, let's see. When people started to work in Lahaina, you see. Like before they thought, oh, it's so far to go to Kaholoi or Waluku. Then they started working in Lahaina. Distance don't mean anything today. What about when uh, Dream City came up and people started moving out of the camp? Oh, that, uh, oh, that's when we felt it also. That was, I, I would say, between five and ten years after I started the business. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that made a lot of difference too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the merchants, did they start to steal it? To uh, yes, and uh, some have gi given up. And right now, while well, Paia isn't too bad because there are a lot of these mainly folks m moved up a uh, couple Kalua where we <laughs> used to be, and uh, Haiku Way. These are the kind of things they use. Uh, the Ikima uh, uh, apples, especially now. And then uh, I, I say, oh, did you pay for your apple? I said. No, this, um, uh, I don't need to pay for it because God made this. And I said, well, is that so? Well, when God pays my, my expense, my taxes, and my electricity and uh, whatever, yeah, the day God pays me, then I can, uh, I'll tell you, you can help yourself. Our final retail story is not a tale from the plantations, but from urban Honolulu, all about the founding of the ABC stores. Sidney Kosasa was born in 1919 in Palolo Valley. His Japanese parents ran a grocery store there, and he grew up working in the store. He started his career as a pharmacist in St. Louis in 1943, coming back to Hawaii the next year to work at a local drugstore chain. In 1949, he opened Kaimaki Pharmacy on Waialai and eventually owned eight drugstores on the island. In 1965, he went to a chain drugstore meeting in Florida and saw firsthand the business that convenience stores were doing with tourists. He came back to Honolulu and opened the first ABC store in Waikiki. And by 1975, he had seven of them. Ten years later, he had 27. When this interview was done with Sidney Kosasa in 2001, there were 60 ABC stores with seeds originally planted by his mother. You said once that your mother was the one who suggested that you go into pharmacy? Pharmacy, yeah. But when was this? That was uh, when I was going to high school. And that's when I was working in the grocery store too, see. And my mother is always kind of, she's a good businesswoman, see. So she says, you know, because there was Stewart Pharmacy and Hollister Drugstore on, on the Wildlife Avenue. So they said, hey, they make more money than, <laughs> than the grocery store. See? So they want to take a pharmacy and, and open up a drugstore, see? So uh, that's, that, that's how uh, I, I kind of, she gave me that idea, see? So, and how did you feel about that idea? I, I, I thought that was pretty good because I, I, I grew up in a grocery store, so know the businesses. So I said, well, we're working in, in, in a drugstore, all I do is take a pharmacy, you know, <laughs> and get a pharmacy. Imagine you could open a, a, a drugstore, you know. So, so, uh, so then I kind of made, made up my mind that, I, yeah. Uh, Eventually, I'll open up a drugstore, see. How did you get the idea to start ABC? When I went to this chain drug meeting in Miami, at that time, we were back in 1965, see. The big uh, hotels were all in Miami. There was a little kind of a shopping mall in Miami, see. And yet, we noticed that, see, all the people, you know, all around there, they were going to the shopping area to go, go shop, see? So we figured, see, Waikiki, one of these days going to have a lot of hotels around. And then, you know, we'll be able to gotta look around for locations so we, we'll anchor ourselves with our shops around there. And that's how we, we got started on it. So when we came back, and you know, we started looking all around Waikiki. There was hardly anybody around Waikiki. Only, only Hale Kulani uh, was one of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel and Moana Hotel. That was the only hotel there. And I figured, gee, how am I going to be one of these days like Miami? So when we started out, we started out with Hell of Beauty. So that's what they say, ABC Discount Drugstore first. <laughs> so they still think of us as a drugstore too, you know, ABC Drugstore, you know. Since we carry a lot of drugs and cosmetics, and of course we carry groceries and fast food, now we carry everything. How did you come up with the name ABC? Tourists that come from the mainland, from Japan, they cannot remember the Hawaiian name or anything. 
So why don't you, why don't we pick up an easy name so that anybody can remember? So that's how we pick up ABC.